There were four people, I only know the names of three of them, Pete Nord, who was a professional scouter, and Sheldon Barrows, who was the scout executive, and Fred Appledorn, who the Appledorn Trail is named after, and they looked down from there on the lake and one of them said, this is the place. The first year of campers was 1921. The year before that, actually, that the, was the Fruit Valley Area Council. I had a year of camp at Pretty Lake Camp, just west of here. And then the next year they came to Rural Kawan. They bought 10 acres, financed by the Rotary Club and the Kiwanis Club. That's the name, Rotary, Rota Kiwan. The 10 acres was $5,000. They donated the money and that went from there. And then we went to, at one point, I want to say in the mid 1980s, it got up to be like three or four, five hundred acres. And in the late 1980s, third time frame, we sold some of that out because we was going through some financial problems. Of course, our, our Cub Camp is, was built in the 80s, and that was uh, a lot, new, lot uh, newer technology and newer style kids. Youth that come out here will get a chance to actually see the difference in the facilities, 50s compared to the 80s, and also experience it because they use the facilities 12 months of the year. The Cub Scout resident camp here at Rotokwan was the first in the nation that was a theme Cub Scout camp. We have a theme trapper frontier for Indian, Lumberjack, and 49er. So it's Cub Scout could come five different years and have a totally different program. When it was originally started in 1988, that's the way it went for about five years until we think, I don't know, I wasn't around, but we think National said you should have a theme each year and a switch. We're trying to get it to go back to when you go to the Trapper Village all the staff would be dressed as trappers. You would have games dealing the same thing that what the trappers would do in the 1700s. And if you went to Frontier Fort, it would be the same thing. And you'd have, they would have crafts for you to do that would appropriate to either Trapper Fort, Indian, 49er, or the Lumberjack. Basically in the, in the, late, in the early 50s, there was a number of buildings that were actually added out here and we refer to them as the Pines and the Oaks and Tamaracks and Cedars Cabins and also the Boy Scout Dining Hall was built in 1955. That was called a dining hall before it was called a mess hall and I remember the scout executive at the time was very explicit he says if you call the dining hall a mess hall he says I'm going to take your registration card away from you. So that those buildings have been built and then of course a lot of them for the cub world have been added since then but as it stands right now most of the buildings that were built in the 50s are still here a lot of the ones that were built in the 20s and 30s are, are long gone in 1972 the boy scouts joined the fruit belt area council joined with the scout council in st joe which was the uh, Southwestern Michigan Council and the council that was in Battle Creek and formed the one council which became the Southwest Michigan Council and the Battle Creek camp was named T. Ben Johnson and St. Joe camp was named Camp Madron and our camp here was Camp Rotokwan and we sold those other two camps and then named the Boy Scout camp after the Camp Madron and the Cub Scout camp after T Camp T. Ben Johnson. The uh, totem pole that's in the Cub Dining Hall is T. Ben Johnson, his wife, and his three sons that were Eagle Scouts. He was a long scouter in Nattawa Trails, i.e. the Battle Creek Calhoun area. Calhoun County area. Yes, he was an, a long time scouter there. That's why he got T. Ben Johnson.
I don't know anything about Madron, but I know the Madron camp and a good share of the information that came with it was donated by the Whirlpool Port Corporation, which is the uh, the one of the founding fathers, maybe the, the owner, the original owner of it is Fred Upton Sr., not the Senator Fred Upton Jr. And they have, many year times, they have donated money to build certain different portions of our buildings. Like the Indian Village itself is Fred Upton building, but everybody knows it as the Indian Village. The properties changed a lot too. <clears throat> the road that you drive in on now was not owned by the Boy Scouts of America at the time I was out here as a youth. We actually <laughs> rented property off from the Hill families, which was further to the north, and to be able to get into the camp. And then the road actually ended over by the Boy Scout dining hall, the new dining hall in 55. The road ended there because the property on the backside of camp, which was the Todd property, was was actually rented for use during the summer for summer camp, but was not owned by the Boy Scouts. Now we own it all the way across to 8th Street. From Texas Drive to 8th Street, we own property. Other than camping an awful lot, we also, in the fall, normally in the latter part of September to the first part of October, we have what is called Cub Camp Preview. Any new scout, a Cub Scout that signs up, normally with the scout sign up in September, historically they've been able to come here for free to get to see what the camp looks like. Anybody that was registered before September or whatever the time frame they decide, they will have to pay a small nominal fee and they, there they get to go shoot the BB gun, the uh, archeries and they have some crafts and nature walks and stuff like that. We also, just about every year, we have a Klondike, which comes normally in the last part of January or the first part of February, where the scouts gets to experience the outdoor activities similar to what an individual would be if they were in Alaska. Another one that we started just a few years ago but it was a repeat of something that was done by a troop in the past was what was called the, it's now called Haunted Woods. It's a Halloween type thing and it's a one day event that is well attended the last few years. The reason that I continued in the scouting program basically is the fact that the principles that, that the Boy Scout program has are the principles that I even use to raise my family and I find them the best principles. Scouting is a way of life in our family. It's those principles. Serve your unit, serve the country, be your winner, be trustworthy. Good master, he be running the pack, never let a brother down, cause he got your back. I'm gonna shoot for the stars, hey. gonna be brave, gonna go far. Hey. Sink or swim, keep your head up high, I'm a boy scout till I die. Oh,